Lord, we're here for you. We just want you more than we want to breathe, Lord. We want you more than life, God. We want you more than breath, Lord. God, we want to stay undone. We want to stay undone, Lord. We want to stay undone. Undone in your glory presence. So welcome, holy, holy, holy one. Welcome, welcome him, welcome him. Welcome the one who is worthy to be welcomed. Welcome him. Welcome the one who is worthy to be worshipped. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We welcome you again with our laid down lives, Lord. We welcome you again with our worship. We welcome you again, Lord, with all that is within us. And we say, Lord, that all we want is full possession. We want to be fully possessed by you, Holy Spirit. We don't care what it costs. We don't care the price. We want full possession by you, Holy Spirit. Lord, that the fragrance of Christ would flow from our little lives. Oh, God, that we would be, we would be continuous, continuously pouring out our lives like oil, our lives like incense upon your throne, oh, God. Lord, you see my heart. You see my heart. And I want you, Lord, and I want you to come and undo these people. God, just come and undo them, God, that they would never be the same. Come and undo them, Holy One. Come and undo them, Holy One of Israel. Come and ravish their hearts. Ravish their hearts. Ravish their hearts. Until they, until they lay down for love. Until they lay down for love. So Jesus, help me. I don't know how to speak. I don't know how other people do, and I don't. I don't. But whatever you want to do, here's a little laid down life you can use. Whatever you want to do, here's my little, tiny little life, God. Whatever you want to do, here it is. Even now, today, just a little life at your feet. And come and wreck people. Oh, well, just, you just can't take me anywhere. It's like, I was talking to Jesus, you know, this morning, and last night, and I said, oh, I just want to go to heaven, you know, I don't want to speak. Oh, I don't know why anyone has me come. Just so in love, you see that if the presence of God is anywhere near, I just I can't I can't like this. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I just want His presence more than life, and ah, uh, it was as we were worshiping, the Lord really spoke to me about um, what He wants, and. Um, he wants something, too. And he says that uh, he wants us to place him. It's from Song of Solomon. Place me, chapter 8, verse 6, like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as the grave. And it burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot wash it away. 
If one were to give all the wealth of his house for love, it would be utterly scorned. And, uh, wow. I just heard the Holy Spirit. that Jesus is really jealous for our love and um, he wants us to get into a place where we're so in love that we give our life away and um, he's taken me to that place and all I want to do is worship and, and bring in the bride worship and bring in the bride and I've, I've gotten so simple um, every time I, I think I'm going to you know, get something, something, whatever. He just wrecks me again. And he says, Heidi, oh, I'm jealous. I'm jealous that my church love me purely. I'm jealous that my church worship me purely. I'm jealous that my church um, not look to another and focus completely upon my face. The Lord's given me um, several revelations in the last few months about sonship and about being a, a son, about being a daughter, and wholly um, given to him. But he's also giving me a revelation about his hunger to marry us, his desperation to marry us. And I, I was praying again this morning, and oh, well, I'm always praying. I'm always, always. It's good to be here, Randy. I don't know why you have me. <sighs> uh, I was repenting, you know, as I was getting wrecked for not wanting to come. <sighs> it's not that I don't love you, it's just that I'm leading thousands of Muslims to Jesus every week. And I said, you know, I don't understand, you know. <sighs> okay. He just said, keep it simple. <laughs> John 15. Simple as it gets. John 15. Abiding. If we can abide fully inside of Jesus, then we'll have so much fruit we won't know what to do. <laughs> and joy. I was thinking about how does it, I got here late last night. It took me two and a half days to get here again, you know. I'm here for three. <laughs> and I was saying, God, is this all a joke, you know. <laughs> I don't understand. And he said, Yielded love. I'll take you wherever I want, and I'll do whatever I want with you, and I'll, I just want you to be a yielded, yielded, yielded little lover. Oh and so I'm seeing about fruitfulness, and sometimes fruitfulness looks differently than we understand. You see, my fruitfulness looks like tens of thousands in this year coming up. I'm contending for a million souls, and uh, I'm going to see it. I know I'm going to see it. And, and I said, God, you know, why don't we, why don't we do these, these other things, you know? And he said, because I'm jealous for my love. And this conference is about love. Pour it out so strongly in your life that you will give it away around the world or across the street. I believe that this, this conference is about so much manifest presence of His love. So many of you coming into your place as sons and daughters and lovers that you will t totally give your life away for the rest of the world that doesn't know Jesus. So here it is. He says, I am the vine and my father's the gardener. And he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And while every branch does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it will be even more fruitful. You're already clean, 
John 15, you're already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Whoa. Because um, this is Randy's conference, I want to share something again about... Uh, something that changed my life and brought me into an abiding. Um, I've always been this little radical Pentecostal running after Jesus um, since I was 16 and saved and just pursuing his presence. Anywhere where there was a drop of his presence, I wanted it. And I was desperate for it. And my heart was always just pursuing God. I, uh, my, it's like I, I pray this every day, God, I love you more than breath. Do you know what that means? To love him more than breath? We have to breathe to be alive, but I love him more than breath. I don't care if I'm alive. I just want more of Jesus living inside of me, and I don't want to wait. You know, I, I was to stay, it's like, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. There's this desperation in my soul. It's, I don't want to wait. I must have more of you. I don't want to wait. I want my wedding now. <laughs> I want union now. I want, full, I want full possession now. I'm undone now. Don't make me wait. I want full possession now. Full, full, fully yielded now. And there's this cry in my heart. Well, those years ago when I was worshiping in, in Randy's meeting somewhere in the middle, back, whatever, there was a, a cry in my heart. I said, I've got to have more. I don't care what a fool I look. And it's like God allows me to look like a fool all the time. And I'm just such, I, he does, he just does it, you know. And I, I, I'm, I don't care anymore. And um, I ran up there, and, the, and just this fire of God burned away the other things. That's what it was. Some people, you know, they always are arguing about manifestations. What do they mean, and why do we have it? I, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm, I don't understand all that. I just believe that if God's doing what he's doing, we ought to press in so desperately for more. And what happened to me was, was just this fire burned away other lovers. You see what I mean? Other loves, other things, other desires, ambition and, and desire to do things that didn't, didn't bring full glory to Jesus. Just little things. I don't know what little things they were, all, all of them were, but he was just burning them and burning them, literal fire just burning through my soul and ripping away everything that he didn't like. Just burning it away, and that's what God wants to do. He wants to so woo you into his glory that you don't care how much it costs. And people are always asking, what does it cost? Everything. It cost everything. He will have no other lovers. No one can stand before him who wants to be a seal on your heart. He wants you to be so, so ravished by his love that you look not to another. Not to another thing, not to another ministry, not to another program, not to another plan, but you focus your gaze upon the one who is altogether lovely. And then God will take your little life, and every one of our life in the natural is insignificant, but in the spirit we're sons. In the spirit we're lovers of Jesus who are married on our way to that wedding. And you see, because of that, God is saying, I will do anything for you. If you will let me take you and burn away and cut away everything that has not brought me glory, then I will take you into my presence. And in that place, there'll be so much, whoa, fruit that you won't understand. 
And he showed me, you know, I, I said before that, that prayer, I really saw my life was having a great. That was, and I was presenting it to Jesus. I was going to give him my grape because I love him. But after that day, he began to grow a vineyard. Do you understand the difference? <laughs> Do you want to present a grape or a vineyard? Do you want to give Jesus your grape when you go and marry him on that day? Do you want to give him a vineyard? He predestined you, church, to be fruitful. And you get scared about what it might cost. You get concerned about what it might cost, what might I have to give to be fruitful. Everything! Everything! A yielded life so laid down that God takes it and he, he explodes his presence through you until fruit grows huge vineyards of fruit, and you look around and you go, <laughs> that's joy, that's fruit, that's your destiny. God wants to take you into your destiny as lovers. Amen. He wants to take you into your destiny as lovers. I'm the vine, you're the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Well, you, many of you have heard this story over and over, but uh, when you get so close to Jesus, then your little becomes much. Do you know that? I, I was just saying, pressing in for more. And the more I'm pressing in for more, the more and more there is. <laughs> It's just pressing it. I mean, Roland and I, we, we've always tried hard, but we just never saw much. And now everything's happening, you know? Everything's happening. Last week, I'm so glad I'm a day late because I, I led hundreds of people to Jesus because of that. Muslims that were out there. <laughs> I said, I got to be at home. Can I tell you a story about fruitfulness? Yeah. I've been pressing in for fruitfulness, and I was out there just, you know, we have this powerful team. They're awesome. They're so powerful. They're about 10 and 11, 12. Little kids I found in the garbage and under trees. And uh, we're standing out in front of this huge mosque, and it's this huge mosque in Cabo Delgado. It's the biggest mosque in town. And we're standing there, and they're throwing rocks. And we're just ducking, you know? And my little kids are not afraid. Ha! Huh? They take after their mama. And they're not afraid. And we're ducking the sand, and we're ducking the rocks, and we're just going, more Jesus! Ha! <laughs> And we're worshiping, and we're worshiping, and the little kids are singing there on the flatbed truck in front of a huge mosque. And there's a crowd of angry Muslims there. It says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you'll bear much fruit. And I look at this crowd of angry Muslims. I just love this. I just love this. I just go, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, now what? And like usually, he always does this. He, he says to me, Heidi, call the deaf. So I said, well, bring me the deaf. And somebody tells the deaf people what I'm saying, and they come. This particular night was just recently, this month, they brought this guy, and uh, he was an angry Muslim. I like to hug people, you know. I couldn't really hug him, so I just kind of side-hugged him, you know. It's been like, and the kids keep, I said, keep singing, sweeties. And they're ducking sand and rocks, you know, and they're just singing them, holding this angry guy, and just like this, and saying, come, Holy Spirit, come, sweet Jesus, open his ear. I was there, I don't know, it felt like a long time, six, eight minutes, something like that. And then he starts screaming, ah, I can hear, I can hear, I can hear. And he grabs the mic, I can hear, and they're telling the truth, ha, ah, and they throw their rocks down. <laughs> Like, yes! <laughs> Whoa! They 
threw the sand down. They just, and the Muslim crowd in front of this huge mosque. Do you understand fruitfulness? Oh, hi, Bill. It was the huge mosque in front, the big mosque. It was huge. It was right in back of this huge mosque. And, and all these people angry, and one deaf man hears, and they all ditch Islam. I said, could we make a deal? This was, I said, could we make a deal? I said, if I pray for you and you get healed, will you be meeting Jesus? He said, I'm Muslim. I said, everybody's Muslim. <laughs> I'm making a deal with you. If, if you get healed now, will you ditch Islam again? This is how I talk to him. I don't know, complicated. I don't understand complicated. I just said, if I pray for you and you're healed, will you ditch Islam? He, he looked at me for a minute. He was in a lot of pain. He goes, I'm in a lot of pain. I said, I know. I'm not praying for you until you answer me. <laughs> he said, yes. If I'm totally healed and I have no more pain, I will follow Jesus, your Jesus. I prayed for him. He said, I'm better, but not totally. I said, that's not good enough. We made a deal. I'm praying for you again. I prayed for him again. He starts crying. His tears running down his face. He said, no more pain, no more pain. I said, what about our deal? <laughs> I said, yes. Right now, yes. Holy. He met Jesus. He met him right there, just right there. The last fruitfulness is flowing out of intimacy. You see, we, we don't have any other plan. We don't have any other strategy. We don't know any other way. We just press in for God so desperately that lately there have been piles of pastors everywhere. <laughs> These guys are named Mohammed, Ishmael, and Omar. <laughs> Saba. Fruitfulness flowing out of intimacy. And we bring them. The last church, I, I took visitors here. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> so these pale people, I brought them with me. I didn't tell them till after they'd killed the last pastor and burned the church. I said, this is a little rough area. It's okay. said, just, you know, pray for people. They need to get healed. <laughs> I can't believe I'm such a rascal. It was again, little kids and, you know, two-week-old pastors. They've been saved for two weeks. They've already got 30 people there discipling for Jesus. Oh, so I got them there, and we're all standing there. And again, they're throwing sand. I said, really, somebody has to get healed. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> I said, here come the deaf mutes. <laughs> I love deaf mutes. <laughs> and I grab them. <laughs> I just grabbed them. They were kids. Ah! said, say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Again, the whole village ditched Islam. Our church is not burned down. That was this month, this month, this month again. I'm not going to tell us any old stories, not a, 
No, I don't want old stories. I don't want old stories of what God did 200 years ago. I'm glad for it. I'm thrilled for it. But I want a new story. I want a story today. I want a story this week. I want a story tomorrow. I want a new story. I want to see fruit every day. I don't want an old vineyard. I want fruitfulness 12 months of the year. Hey! I want in and out of season fruitfulness. I want fruitfulness like Ezekiel 47. What is it? Why are some people worried about staying over their heads? Precisely that. They don't want over their heads. They want to think and think and think and think until their heads are huge and their hearts are small and they don't understand the thing anymore. He said, over your head. I want to take you over your head. I want to take you past your understanding. Over your head. Immersed, shunned I, until your mind becomes the mind of Christ. Until you walk like a son on the earth and your mind becomes the very mind of Christ. I'm talking to you about a transformation that takes place when you abide in the secret place. When you abide in the holy glory of who he is. A transformation in your very mind. A transformation in your very soul where you start thinking the thoughts of God. Oh, you start thinking like he thinks and feeling like he feels and doing what Jesus does. I'm talking about a transformation so complete, so fully given under the river that there are literally crops 12 months of the year. This is not natural. The church wants to walk in the natural realm. And they want a little fruit and a little fruit and a little fruit. Or they say they want supernatural, but they don't want to pay the price of fire. Oh, they don't understand the price. He says, I'm going to rip away everything. Every single little thing, every single little thing, I'm going to so cut it away that all you are is fully given, wholly given, totally yielded. That's what fruitfulness flows from that place where you're so in love, you're so given to him, Shabba, that it's 12 months of the year. Now, naturally, a crop does not bear 12 months of the year. There's a time for sowing, there's a time for reaping, there's a time for planting, blah, 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 I've heard it all over. Hang that! Let the river flow! Sunday! If, 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 if Ezekiel 47 has to be the higher place, there's all kinds of things in Scripture that are progressive, it is showing you this is what it is, this is what it can be. This is what it is. This is what it can be. This is what it is. This is what it can be. Like John 15, it's showing you this is what it can be. Twelve months of the year. Phenomenal fruitfulness flowing out of love that makes the world change from darkness to light. Oh, God wants to take you to a place of the supernatural where your mind is transformed and you walk in a new place. Holy is the Lamb. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Do you understand that? See, what happened those years ago when Randy prayed for me, and, and, and it keeps happening, I keep getting undone, but it was like the major beginning of this thing of death and new life. It was this thing of death and new life where God was saying, I, I am jealous for all of you. I've got to have all of you. If you want just to give me a part, you will have a few grapes. If you want to give me all, then you will have vineyards and vineyards and vineyards. And this was a part, and what he said to me, and I'm going to share the other, whoa, message tonight. He gave me two major things in seven days on the floor in his glory without moving. So I think they may be important. They are to me. <laughs> oh! And I, I, I mean, seven days unable to move, you do understand a few things like you can do nothing. For a type A driven person, seven days on the floor is a long time. 
Pearly. And he said to me, you can do nothing, nothing, nothing without me, nothing without the church. I didn't, thought, I, didn't I, was, I wasn't sure I liked the church. I said, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, I know about the nothing without you, but what about nothing without the church? Well, God demonstrated it to me. I couldn't get to the loo. That was important to me. I wanted to get there, I couldn't get there. I needed the church to carry me. Four people, six people. I sometimes needed some water. I couldn't get any. He demonstrated it to me. He said, do you want to understand here? I'm going to let you understand. You can do nothing without me. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I know that. Oh, holy, holy, holy. Nothing without the body of Christ. Oh, well. Are you thirsty? When I was thirsty, somebody had to hear God. Somebody I didn't know Somebody I didn't know had to hear Jesus tell them that woman over there. They could most of them think I was nuts. That woman over there, she's thirsty. Give her some water. And they had to come around and they had to pour it down my throat without me being able to speak to them and say yes or no, did I want it or not. If I wanted to go even to the restroom, somebody had to hear God tell them to take me there because I could not communicate. And do you understand how I learned this lesson? You can do nothing, 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 nothing without me and nothing without the body of Christ. Do you understand my illustration? Oh, I do. I got it. I got it. See, God called me. He said, Heidi, I want, you to, I want you to feed people. I said, yes, Lord. <laughs> How many? <laughs> oh, 100,000. 200,000. Sitting in Bill's office. Hi, Bill. I was sitting there, and uh, Todd Bentley was eating all your Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> he ate them all. Probably emptied the jar. <laughs> and he was talking about famine eating Tootsie Rolls. I thought, man, this is America. <laughs> I remember this because, see, God's talking about what it, what, how we can't do a thing by ourselves. So I was in another conference, you know, and I, this is my biggest struggle, struggle <laughs> is coming to these things. Tell I'm here and then I'm okay. As long as God's there, I'm okay. I'll like worship my way in and I'll be fine, you know. But it's like getting on another plane. Ooh, I'm sure you understand. Two and a half days. Here I am on another one. Hell, thank you. I worship. I worship. I worship. <laughs> so, okay. He's eating Tootsie Rolls, talking about famine. He has seen me snockered in Bill's church there in the front somewhere. And I was afraid he was going to hit me, you know, because he likes to hit people. And I was in a tender place. I, w I wasn't ready to be hit or anything. I was just like, he said, you! I went, oh, oh sweet Jesus, I love this Todd, but I don't let him hit me. I was just in such a tender place. And um, he said, we need to feed people. I said, we do. He said, I said, uh, we do, Todd. He's trying to preach. Holy Spirit tells him to feed people while I'm lying there snuckered. See, God, you don't know. You know, you think some people think this looks odd. What are people doing just lying there snuckered? God's saying, well, he's doing things like talking to people about feeding 100,000 people. Don't ever, ever get upset about what Holy Spirit does. I love Holy Spirit. I love Holy Spirit. I love Holy Spirit. I say more Holy Spirit. Wreck the place. Oh, I love Holy Spirit. So he's standing there, and he's standing. He's trying to preach about signs and wonders. We hadn't seen any quite yet, but we did. We did. We did. But we hadn't at the moment. He goes, we have to feed. And he eating Tootsie Rolls. He just says, how many? I said, 100,000. He said, 100,000. Four months we fed 100,000 people. Four months last year fed them through the famine. Whoa, 
Is that cool? That's the body of Christ. That's the body of Christ. That's what happens when you dwell in the secret place, when you get in a new realm of heavenly realm of glory, and you get up there into the holy place, and then God says, okay, okay, here we are in the throne room. Let me tell you my strategy. Let me tell you my strategy. Our strategy is worth nothing. His strategy happens. Our strategy is nothing. His strategy happens. When you get the mind of Christ in the throne room, whoa, it happens. It's not a good idea. It's not a maybe thing. It's not a if I try hard, I can see it happen. It is a done deal. Hey. It's a done deal. In the heavenly realms of glory, it's a done deal. All you have to do is get so close, Shabbat so burned. <laughs> Everything cut away to where you start hearing download from heaven, shoom, into your spirit. Download from heaven, shoom, into your spirit. And 100,000 people live and meet your king and meet your lover and change their life. They all got saved, of course. Our church exploded like wildfire. Fruitfulness, how much do you want? <laughs> do you want a little, do you, what do you want? How much fruitfulness do you want, church? Oh. Hey, you want just, you know, a little, oh yeah. I'll give you a little, he'll give you a little. You give him everything, watch what he does. It's exponential, it's not a little bit, it's exponential, exponential, that word, do you know that word, exponential? Say that word. Exponential. exponential. It's exponential fruitfulness. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he's like a branch that's thrown away and withers. They're picked up, thrown into the fire, and they're burned. But if, 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 you remain in me and my words remain in me. Ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. If you remain in me and my words remain in you. If, if. It's a conditional statement. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask anything. And the church gets all in a tissy fit because they ask for stupid stuff. They don't get it and they just throw out the Bible. It must not be real. It must not be real. The theologians told us it didn't mean what it said it meant, and so I just don't believe it. I asked for my Lexus. I don't have it, and I'm not going to believe it anymore. Ask whatever you will, and it will be given to you if you remain in me. Shandai, it is to the degree that you remain in him that you ask anything, and it will be given. Whoa! I was doing another conference. What a shock. Last month somewhere, I can't remember where, no, I do, I do remember now. I don't remember the state, but it was somewhere here in America. And it was, ho, oh, I got a phone call. They wake me up really early and then was my staff. They said, emergency. I went, oh, emergency. Sorry to wake you up, but it's terrible. I said, uh-huh, just what is it? Holy, 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 what is it? They said, they're going to tear down every building we have. I said, oh, no, they're not. <laughs> they said, but the good news is they're waiting till you get back. <laughs> I said, how sweet. Isn't that sweet? I mean, the Marxists already took 55 buildings, so the charismaniacs. As sweet as they are said, that will never happen. God's God. I said, okay, bless your heart. I've seen it happen. I've seen 55 buildings destroyed. I've seen children beaten for the gospel. I've seen suffering. I've seen prison. I've seen jail. I've seen hunger. I've seen famine. I've seen death. I have seen all of this. And so don't just tritely tell me what won't happen. Let me hear. Let me hear from the king himself what will happen in this matter. 
Because I said to him, I will abide in you. I will live in your glory, Jesus. Whatsoever you want, God, I will live in your suffering and in your joy. I will not say to you that I will ditch you if suffering comes because suffering is a part of the kingdom. Whoa, but not for long. Not for long, not for long, not for long, not for long, not for long. Because in the kingdom there, which will come to this earth, there is none. And it's coming now, 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 now. So I'm contending now, now, now. I want it now, Lord. And they're saying every building destroyed. I'm saying now, Lord, the kingdom now, the kingdom now, the kingdom now. And I'm praying. And, and some prophet Bless him, came to me, and I, I believed him again, just like I believed Randy. I believe these guys. When I know they're from God, I believe them. And he said, seven times, seven times, seven times. I went, oh, good, seven times. We need more property, you know? Seven times, that's good. And um, I, they said, God's given you seven times. So I'm standing there. I, I had to go home, and I went home, and I was exhausted, you know, from the flight and they said, okay, you've got to go meet the mayor so they can tell you how to demolish the buildings. I said, no, they're not going to touch these buildings. I said, Mara and Ganya, I don't care about the guardhouse, but I care about all the rest of it. I said, no, I believe I heard from heaven fruitfulness 12 months of the year. I believe I heard from heaven fruitfulness 12 months of the year. I believe I heard from heaven, whoa, that I have a key to this city. I have a key to this city. I have a key to this city. I said, they will not touch my buildings. I have a key to this city. My, my assistant comes walking in. She said, God told me to give you a key. You have a key to this city. And she said, this came from Osman, the Muslim man who owns the city. He said, go to him, get the key, give it to her. Oh, so there I am holding these keys from the owner of the city being transferred into my ownership, Shandai. Why? Because I believe if you abide in him and he abides in you, you will bear much fruit and cities and nations will come running to the glorious king. So I'm holding the keys in my hands. Bill was there. Were you there, D, that day? You weren't there, but it was a cool day. I got the key. I got the keys, and I'm holding the keys, and I'm like, yes, God, yes, God. The next day, I'm in the government. I'm in the government, the mayor's office. There I am again, Presidente de Conselho Executivo. And I'm sitting there in his office. He said, we got to tear your buildings down. I said, just sat there silently for about two and a half hours. He told me what they were going to do and why they were going to do it, and I told him, God likes me. <laughs> I am his child. I'm his little girl, and he likes me a lot, and he will not like you if you tear my buildings down. <laughs> oh. I said there. <laughs> he said, but you have no authority. I said, I have all the authority. I am his daughter, and he likes me very much. And you do not want to make my father angry. <laughs> Who? Him, he, Shandai, God. I said, I'm sitting here. Just sitting here, telling you how much God likes me. Two and a half hours, the man said, <gasps> We're not tearing down anything. I said, just repeat that, please. <laughs> We're not tearing down anything. His eyes got big. We're not tearing down anything. Nothing at all. No, no, we won't touch your stuff. He said, could you please, you know, maybe that guardhouse down there in Martin God said, I'll be in big trouble. I said, oh, yeah, I'll move it. <laughs> I said to God, what about that seven-time thing then? He said, oh, yeah. You know that huge piece of property over there that belongs to Osman? I said, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the only huge piece of property in the whole city. Huge. I mean, it's like 100 acres or so. It's huge. It's huge. I don't know. Don't, don't quote me. Oh, my God. I don't know. It's big. He said, that's yours. I said, cool. All righty then. Let's go get it. 
I'm a little kid. Okay, Dad. Ooh, it's mine. Oh, I'm just this little kid. Like, I'm just, just, just happy. I go, good, cool. What do we do? He goes, go to Osman and tell him you want that. I said, hi, Osman. I want that, you know, huge piece of property. I'll take it. He said, do you know how much it costs? I said, no, you're going to give it to me at uh, cost. He said, I am? I said, yeah, God likes me. <laughs> A whole lot. And you don't want to make him mad. And I need that now. I'm his daughter. I need that. He said, okay. <laughs> we have it. Shonda. We have it. <laughs> Sunday, it's huge. What are we doing there? Building a, this huge church for 3,000 plus people on a Muslim city that's wrecked, wrecked, wrecked. <laughs> We're putting 500 kids there, 500 pastors there, this huge thing. We call it a conference center. <laughs> oh, I just love it. I love this. I love this. Isn't this fun? Oh, I'm, a, I'm not that late. Oh, look at how they make sure you know what time it is in this place. 1101. .01. That is, you can see it glowing at you. Okay. <laughs> As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in love. That's the key, guys. You want to know what the key is? Radical love. I keep saying that I'm a broken CD. That's why I said I don't know why I ever go back anywhere. I just can tell you about love. <laughs> it's, he said, now if you love me, remain in my love. And if you obey my commands, you'll remain in my love. So love and obedience go together. You see, what if, what if, just, if you're just love and you don't obey, you're not a, a son? To be a son, you've got to love and obey. A true son loves and obeys. They don't just love their father and just, oh, you're so sweet, let me hug you and go, go do something stupid. If you love, then you obey fully, totally, incredibly, all, every moment of the day, you are so obedient that you just say, Father, what do you want? What do you want? What's on your heart right now? And so I'm learning how to live in this kind of obedient life that even causes me to get on planes. I'm telling you, I want to hear so clearly what the Father has for this little girl, what the Father has for this little woman, and, and I want to say, okay, let's do that. Whatever it is my Father wants, let's do that. Because love without obedience is very sad. Love without full obedience is a sad thing, just like love without power. You want, to, you want to just love dying people and have no power to feed them, no power to heal them, no power to clothe them, no power to put them in a home. It's very sad. So when God says to me, Heidi, I want your life to be a life of love, and then he gives me a video screen and shows me a dying world, whoa, then I say, yes, Father, yes, Father, yes, Father, now give me the power. Yes, Father. Yes, Father, yes, Father, now give me the power. You give me the love, now give me the power. You give me the love, now give me the power. Do you understand? Just to be a little mush in the garbage dump and hug people and tell them, be well fed and clothed, but I have nothing for you. I will hug you, but I have no food, I have no clothing, I have nothing. I, I, just, I just think you're beautiful and hug you. But if I have no power to see their life transformed, I am a sad woman. But if I abide in him and he abides in me, then I can ask for whatever I want. And I say, houses, 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 lots and lots and lots of houses, lots of food, Dad, lots of food, lots of houses. 
I want hundreds and thousands of houses and food. Food, food, food. I want whole huge warehouses. Okay, why? I abide in you. You said I abide in you and you abide in me and so I'm getting your heart. You said feed them. So where's the stuff? He said here. Whoa! I've never seen a day where anyone's gone hungry that we've brought home. 3,000 people a day eat every single day. Another 2,000 a week in Malawi. Depends if there's famine, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do you understand, church? I wish I could, in love, shake you. I wish in love I could just get you and go... Because your mind needs to get rattled. Oh! So your mind needs to get rattled so you don't think like a natural man. Because a natural man says, let me make a budget. Let me make a plan. Let me make a budget. Let me make a plan. And God said, what's my heart? Will you obey? Will you obey? Will you love? Will you obey? If you love and obey, ask for anything and it shall be yours. I said, God, I'm going to love you. Oh, I know, I'm going to love you, and I'm going to obey every single thing you say. Every single thing you say. Yes, yes, yes. Shava Rabba Shandai. Yes. And then I will ask you, Lord, what you tell me, I will ask you. For what you tell me, I will ask you for what you tell me. Oh, so when God says, feed a nation, I say yes. When God says, bring them all, I say yes. When God says, I want you to go to Harrisburg, I say yes. Do you understand? Love and obedience are together at all times. If you worship God, then you will get his heart. I'm almost finished. No one tell me anything when to finish. Doesn't matter. No one, you're not the controller type, are you? Bless your heart, I ask. <laughs> I know you're not Charles, but you do have a big clock. <laughs> That's for you, okay? Oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> we need, you know, what time? We need to be on his time, whatever time's on God's heart. So, his time. Oh. <laughs> Sunday. See, I, I just, I just, this is what happened. People said something happened to you. I said, oh yeah. What happened to me? I'm living in a new realm. Shika Baba. I stepped in oh, to a heavenly realm. Oh, I stepped into a heavenly realm. Ooh, and sometimes I drift back down here and I go, no, 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 I can't stand it, can't stand it, can't stand it. No, no, don't let me think like that. I've got to think with the mind of Christ, which is meaning I'm sitting, seated, seated, seated with him in the heavenly realm of glory. Shandai, where all things are possible. Hey, where he puts a vision in my heart from him and I obey. I say, yes, daddy. Shandai, send the laborers. And he sends hundreds and hundreds of people to help. Ooh, is it that? That's neat. That's nice. Hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people now. Oh, saying yes. Ooh. Yeah, oh, I am a little excited. <laughs> it's just a new place. If you obey, then you remain in love. Just as you have, I have obeyed, I have obeyed my Father's commands. You remain in His love. I have told you this, so my joy may be in you. That's what's happened to me. Do you see? I'm an illustration. <laughs> I'm an illustration. I'm an illustration. I'm an illustration. I am. I just got that just now. I like it. <laughs> what is it? That's why I'm happy. I have joy. Do you know what happened to my husband? He got happy. Oh, I waited 23 and a half years for him to get happy. That's a long wait, baby. <laughs> he got so jealous of my relationship with Jesus, he couldn't stand it. He was so jealous, he could not stand it, and he really let me know. So I said, do something about it. 
So he walked and he walked and he walked and he walked and he walked three, four, five hours a day. He walked and he walked and he walked and he walked talking to God about why did Heidi have so much and he needed more and it wasn't fair. And he was like, God, four or five hours a day. Jealous. Sometimes jealousy is a good thing. Whoa. He said, not fair. She's happy. There's fruit everywhere. I'm the guy. What's going on? Walking and walking and walking and talking and walking. And suddenly he comes back from a walk and he's happy. Shanda, joy, joy hit the man. He goes to a conference. And all heaven breaks loose. For the first time in his life, he steps in there and all heaven breaks loose. And people jumped like rabbits for hours. They jumped and jumped and jumped. They, it was bizarre and wonderful. People rolled in the aisles laughing. Then he went to another conference and it got, I don't want to say worse because I call it better. Rows, five, six, seven rows. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. He never saw a person fall in his life. Kaboom, kaboom, six rows. He's happy. What happened? You abide in me and I abide in you. You shall bear much fruit and my joy will be in you. Shandai. Uh, he's not here yet, but he's a lot of fun now. <laughs> What happened? What happened? He was melancholy, brilliant man, melancholy, brilliant man. Always frustrated why I was so happy. Can't you get upset? They blew up another truck. Can't you just get a little upset? Don't you understand the seriousness? They blew up another truck. And he would tell me every I'd be in the anointing. He'd tell me all the problems. Trying to I said, oh, okay, and I'd just ha ha ha. <laughs> Can't you understand seriousness? People are dying, and I go, yes, ha ha, let's feed them all. And he'd go, oh God, give her help her, give her a brain. Now he realized I got it. God's, I got Jesus' mind, because he has it too. Now we're both hopeless. We're both hopeless. It's awesome. Two of us now, hopeless. I'm not kidding you. They just, they just totaled, our son totaled two cars, bless him. But we just went, oh, he's okay, Shandai Shaba. Before I would have depressed him for a week, at least minimum, and he would have lectured Elisha for about five hours on responsibility. He just said, I love you, son. Bless your heart. You're okay. Shandai, bless you. I went. Woo! Wow! Do you know, he's got interns now. Three. Snoopy, Tigger, and some white bear with a fire jacket on. I'm not kidding you. This guy's from Caltech. He brings out his interns, his three stuffed animals, which were given to him by prophetic people, you know, those kind, <laughs> the flags. And... <laughs> Tigger bear. The prophets give my husband Tigger. <laughs> and some other prophet gives him the fire bear. I'm like, Yes, God, you know, bless the prophets. <laughs> He's got his three interns. I am now at some conference. Now, I'm not I'm just telling you a story about joy. Because for years, he'd be like, <laughs> suck it out of me. I am trying to pack to go somewhere else. He's in the room. He said, well, you wanted to have devotions for 25 years. So he sticks Tigger on my shoulder. 
I go sliding down the wall, <coughs> laughing hysterically and can't pack. I'm looking at my husband going, something happened to you. <laughs> something really profound happened to you. We're in the house, we're in these friend's house. He throws Tigger down the stairs on this woman. Tigger hits her and she flies. I'm like, it was Bill and Carol. <laughs> Hi, Bill and Carol. You saw the Tigger man. Or was it the bear? It was one of the interns. And a watch, oh yeah, he put the watch on a moose to tell time. Now you could be going, what does that have, or what, what, what? My joy may be in you. And so when the staff calls him, which they do three, four times a day, and says, why are $80,000? He goes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, you know, we blew up another three trucks with the engine. We forgot to put oil in them. He goes, <laughs> sweet Jesus. Ha! Joy. In the midst of suffering, in the midst of trials, joy. So much joy that it's, it's just, do you know how happy I am to tell you this story? <laughs> you have no idea. I do. Joy. The world never got won by miserable people. The world never got won by miserable people. Shundai, and the world will never be won by miserable people. But if you abide in me and I abide in you, my joy will be in you. My joy will be in you. My joy will be in you. You know, missionaries for years, they're never at this conference. It's just, <laughs> but we were in a lot of conferences. For years, the competition for missionaries would be who was most miserable? They got the crown. The ones who were the most miserable, who were the most, un, you know, had the most disgusting conditions and everything was bad. I told some of you before, I mean, we dumped cold water on our kids for years because the poor couldn't have any. We wouldn't eat cheese because the poor couldn't have any. They probably need $5,000 now of inner healing over the cold water. Could have saved a lot of money. I'm telling you, joy. You know, God said, you're allowed to mention Toronto here. What a break. <laughs> it's always like the T word, you know. Can you say the T word? Well, we went to Toronto. Yes. And, whoa, this is a, this is a point about joy. And I'm lying there, I, well I wasn't, I was up for a minute and then I was down like usual and somebody went whoosh, 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 whoosh. prophets, whoosh, 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 whoosh. well they're chopping something, <laughs> what are they chopping, armor, armor, it's not your armor, don't wear that, I went okay, no none of that, but, <laughs> and then God talks to me. This is about joy. God talks to me. He said, take a hot bath. Take a hot bath, eat cheese. God, my father, tells me, take a hot bath and eat cheese. Now, what kind of people could go, didn't he tell you to win a nation? Yes, he told me that years ago. And I, I'm doing it. But he said, eat cheese, take a hot bath. I'm doing that too. Help! Why? My joy may be in you. He's actually nice, this father of ours. He's actually wonderful, this father of ours. And Jesus is altogether lovely. 
And we have had so many misconceptions of him that we have been so afraid to so yield our life because we've been so afraid to so yield our mind and so yield our spirit that if we did, if we did, if we dare do, if we dare do, people look at me sometimes, if we dare did that, look what might happen to me. I say, you want to lead hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Muslims to Jesus and hundreds of thousands of people to Jesus? Do you care if you roll and slobber on the floor for that? Does that really bother you? Is that really a concern? Huh? You can sit there. Not me. Not me. No, not me. Let me just get a little bit. I'll be happy and I'll be controlled and I'll get it together and keep it together. Oh, why? <laughs> why? Why not win the world for Jesus? Why not be happy about it? <laughs> Here's my final point. So, here it is. It's a big point. This point, this final point that I'm about to bring forth. <laughs> I told you, he said. You know, you love me, remain in me, my co and my Father's commands. You've obeyed them, now remain in his love. I've told you this so your joy may, may be in you. My joy may be in you. I told you that one. Hey, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. So there is the point. I have called you friends. For everything I learned of my Father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. This is the point. If you abide in him, if you give your life for him, then you will lay it down. So could we stand up for a minute? Ha! Huh. Oh, yeah, some people are getting it. What's this about? <laughs> it's a really important point. Shandai, if you love me, if you're my friend, how many of you love Jesus in this room? How many of you want vineyards of fruitfulness? Whoa! Man, you're an easy bunch. Then God says, if you really love, if you really love, if you really love, if you really love, then you lay your life down. <laughs> I know, I can't help it. Yes, he does want to kill you. <laughs> you give it away, though, for love. Like I was just doing a minute ago again. For love, I'll give you my life. For love, I'll give you everything for love. I'll give it to you. <laughs> so if you want to totally give all that you are, then God is going to ask you what you want. That's the altar call. Lay your life down. Lay your life down. Lay your life down. And then ask him for that which he has asked you to ask him for. Hey! <laughs> And if you abide in me and I abide in you, then ask for anything you wish and it shall be given to you. I, tell, I ask God, that's really heavy duty. What an altar call. Tell him to ask me for anything. And those who will totally lay their life down and totally obey in love, I will give it to them. So that's the altar call. You can come here, you could kneel before the Lord, you could lie before the Lord, and you're going to give him your life fully, totally, unconditionally. And the worshipers, ho, oh, are going to worship. And this is what I see. Shandai, Shandai, Holy Spirit. Watch out what Holy Spirit's going to do. Holy Spirit! Ah! <laughs> Holy Spirit, welcome. Welcome in the house. Welcome 
in the house, Holy Spirit. Shandai, welcome in the house. He said, go ahead and ask. <laughs> what do you want, son? He said, go ahead and ask, church. We're always, you know, soaking's good. This is not soaking. Soaking's awesome. We're not soaking. We're not soaking now. We're asking now. <laughs>